Teachers, this particular product um, you may want to think of as say it, take it. Um, I like to think of this particular card that comes in this um, set as uh, representing multi-syllable uh, words, two syllables, three syllables, as well as five sounds. So I'm going to demonstrate just with a couple of picture cards as well as a magnetic wand with the magnetic chips that obviously our kids absolutely love to use. So if you think about this as, first of all, as multi-syllable, when we are in the world of sound with our young children, uh, one of the first things that we ask of them on the phonological awareness continuum is to break words into syllables. So I just have a couple of picture cards here um, that, by the way, do not come in this set, but we, as teachers, we all have a great sets of picture cards for oral language. And I have a mailbox. Um, so if we would ask a student to um, break mailbox down into its parts, they would simply clap, tap, whatever you might be having them do, mail, box, I like to do the what I call the count and tap routine so we always know how many once we're finished. Mail, box, and they would find of course that that had two pieces. They would say it, mail, box, with their magnetic chips, and then take it, which is the fun part obviously for them. Now let's think about this with sailboat, of course. So we would count and tap sail, boat, of course, then sail, boat, say it, and I will say take it. Now, if you then make that task just a little bit more difficult for them, I would, I would get into three syllables. So if I found a three syllable picture card, um, how about thinking of maybe butterfly? always a good one. All right, so if I think about butterfly, count and tap, butterfly, say it, and butterfly, and take it. Now, let's think about the continuum, the phonological awareness continuum. We've talked about syllables. Then we also want to talk about when we break words into their individual sounds. So we'll be using this bottom set. I call these Elkonin boxes, of course. And if we thought about a three sound word, because again, we're going to scaffold this for children. And we think about a three sound word such as duck. And if we break that, break those words down into their individual sounds, we know, of course, we only need three out of the five, but our say it part is d, a, and duck. Then we would move into what I would consider to be a four syllable word. And um, I'm thinking of a word like nest and say it. In other words, breaking it down into its individual sounds. N, e, s, t, and take it, nest. And that gives students a lot of opportunity to work in, in the world of sound. Now this can be um, obviously teacher directed as well as same wand and chips considering the fact that you can also let them have the opportunity to practice this in maybe what we would call a, a, a student station, um, a, a centers, whatever you might call those in your classroom. And again, I've scaffolded these into uh, from three sounds up to four sound words. Now, in a station, what I've done is I've added the layer of teacher support by giving them the um, the clue of how many sounds are in that word because that's in essence their check. So if you think about the word ant, okay, as a, n, t, that would be the say it part, of course, the take it is ant. There's absolutely no question then when a child is in a, in a station uh, with his peers of uh, how many of the chips that they would need and that's going to be the additional bit of support that I think We'll take this from teacher directed as well as student uh, centered as well when they go into their stations. Now, if you consider taking this to the next level um, where we say in the world of sound as well as in the world of letters. So now we're going to take this again 
and we could think about this at the one syllable level and let's say that we have a word um, all the way up to the five sound level and I've given the student the word or the picture card stamp and I'm having difficulty locating stamp so we'll just leave that as it is. So if you think about how many sounds are in stamp, we would have students at the say it level, s, t, a, m, p, being all the way up to the five sound word, say it, and of course, take it would be stamp. Now let's go to the grapheme mapping of that. So of course, again, child says, teacher says, what's the first sound in stamp? Student says, s, do you have a letter that spells that sound? Yes, I have the letter S. Next sound? and I have the letter T to spell that. And of course, we're just gonna put those in the boxes as we go. What's the vowel sound in the word stamp? And they would say a, ah, which is the say it part. All right, and we're gonna spell that, of course, with the letter A. The sound after the a in stamp is the m, and we spell that. And the last sound in stamp is p, and we spell that with the letter P. So we've taken this all the way from the world of sound to the world of letters with what we call phoneme grapheme mapping. Now, that same concept can also be taken up to the multisyllable level with our students who are just a little bit older, and if we would want them to spell words with more than one syllable, then we simply count and tap our syllables, see whether we need a two-syllable box, whether we need three, a three-syllable box, and, and we simply ask, what did, you, what did you hear, or what did you say when your finger was here? What did you say when your finger was here on my two-syllable word? And um, then we simply just phoneme graphing map at the syllable level. Again, that would be teacher directed. So let's do a, a recap. We have in the world of sound, we have say it and take it with our magnetic wand and chips. At the multisyllable level for our young children, at the single uh, sound level for students who are at the phoneme level, as well as something for stations and teacher directed with phoneme map, grapheme mapping. For more information or additional support, whether it be on-site, online, or by phone, please feel free to contact me.